Hello everyone, my name is Erin Lomax and I am the Education Specialist at the Smithsonian Marine Ecosystems Exhibit at the St. Lucie County Aquarium in Fort Pierce, Florida. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about plankton. We also have a plankton matching activity that is included in this module along with an answer key. Uh, the activity can be done completely from home. However, if you do have any questions while you're exploring this module, please feel free to reach out to the education team. Our contact information will be at the end of this video. So this module is best for grades four through seven. We'll start with a short video overview. The activity is included in this module. It can be found right below this video. And then once you're finished with that activity, you can check your answers with the answer key, which is also included. So let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about plankton. So plankton uh, is something that most people have heard of, but they're not quite sure what it is or why it's important. So plankton are living organisms. They live in the water and most of them are microscopic, which means you need a microscope to be able to pick out any detail on that organism. And some of them are also single celled. Plankton are drifting organisms, so that means they're incapable of swimming against the current. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't some plankton that are able to move. As you can see from this video here, which was uh, recorded by a researcher at the Smithsonian Marine Station of, uh, of a plankton sample that he had taken, there are plankton that can move on their own. However, they're not big enough and they're not strong enough to swim against the currents in the water. So they just kind of go where the current takes them and that's why we call them a drifting organism. This particular organism is a peanut worm larva and uh, the photo on the right is going to show you what that animal will look like when it's uh, when it's full sized. Uh, peanut worms can range in size from less than an inch to over a foot. So when we're talking about plankton, we're actually talking about two different types of plankton. So phytoplankton is single celled and it is more plant-like. Uh, an easy way to remember the word phytoplankton is that phyto means plant. Now zooplankton are animals and an easy way to remember the word zooplankton is that zoo means animal. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into phytoplankton. They do share some characteristics with plants that we might find on land or some of the plants that we find in water as well. However, unlike land plants and plants in the water like seagrasses, phytoplankton do not have a root system. However, like other plants, phytoplankton do photosynthesize. So they use energy from the sun in order to make food and to release oxygen. And about half of the oxygen that we breathe here on Earth actually comes from phytoplankton in the water. Now we tend to find phytoplankton in a region called the photic zone, which is the kind of the first layer of water uh, in a body of water because the phytoplankton need to be near enough to the surface in order to photosynthesize. So they need the sun's rays uh, on, the, on the surface of the water in order to make food and to release oxygen. Now with zooplankton, some of these zooplankton are larval stages of animals that are someday going to be much larger. And most marine life actually spends part of its larval stage in the plankton. So uh, some of the animals that, that we're familiar with, like crabs and sea stars and sea urchins, they all start as zooplankton. Now when I say larva, I'm talking about a very young animal who will undergo metamorphosis, and that just means big physical changes before they develop into an adult. And there's two different types of zooplankton we're going to talk about today, meroplankton and holoplankton. So meroplankton are organisms that spend the first part of their life cycle um, in the plankton, but they don't remain in the plankton permanently. They eventually get big enough um, that they are no longer plankton. However, there are zooplankton called holoplankton that do spend their entire lives as plankton. Now because our activity today is going to kind of focus on meroplankton, I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. Meroplankton, as I said, are organisms that just spend the first part of their lives um, as plankton. Now some of these animals will eventually uh, find a permanent spot to settle in. They'll become a sessile organism. That means an animal that's fixed to one spot. And as an example, I want to show you guys these 
barnacles. So the picture on top is a barnacle larva. So that is a free swimming organism. It spends the first part of its life swimming around in the water until it finds a place to settle. So we might find barnacles on docks or under boats or on rocks, uh, anywhere that they can affix themselves permanently to grow into those barnacles that we all know and love. Now, there are other free swimming mirroplankton which will eventually get larger, and they might also spend some or all of their lives feeding on other plankton. So to give you an example, this cute little guy right here spends the first part of his life as a planktonic organism until he eventually gets quite large. This is actually an octopus. Um, so the photo on the left is what an octopus looks like when it first comes out of the egg sac and it will eventually become a much larger animal after it goes through metamorphosis. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about ocean food webs next because phytoplankton and zooplankton are crucially important parts of the ocean's food chain. It really forms the basis of many of those, uh, those food webs. And I have a very simple graphic there on the left for you as well. You can take a look. Zooplankton will feed on smaller zooplankton. There are other zooplankton that might feed uh, on phytoplankton. And then larger ocean animals will consume the plankton. And then in turn, even larger animals than that are going to be eating the animals which consume the plankton. And that includes us as humans. Uh, there are many ocean animals that we consume, uh, fish like sardines or herrings, uh, crabs as well, that have fed on plankton at one point in their lives. So we are included in that ocean food web. There are even some animals on Earth which are very, very large, and they feed on plankton their whole lives. So baleen whales are some of the largest animals animals on earth and they consume plankton. So baleen whales would be whales like humpback whales, blue whales. They have specialized mouth structures in their mouths called baleen that helps them filter plankton out of the water and that's what they eat. So some of the largest animals on earth are eating some of the smallest organisms on earth. All right, so now that we know a little bit about plankton, it is your turn uh, to get started on our activity. The plankton matching activity is going to ask you to match a plankton larva to its adult form. I think you're really going to be surprised that some of those animals which you recognize had a very bizarre looking larval stage. So should be a lot of fun. You can check your answers with the answer key once you're all finished. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, the best way to contact us is through email. Our email address is smseducation at si.edu. Thank you so much. Please let us know if you need anything and have a great day.